In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform integration using the double angle formula. So here's our first integral. We want to compute the integral of sine of 4x times cos of 4x. And initially, it looks like we might have to use substitution for this integral. But there's really a much easier way if you remember the double angle formula for sine. And that goes like this. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine of theta times cos of theta. This sine of theta cos of theta part looks a lot like what we have in our integral here, except instead of theta, we have 4x. So why don't we write this again using 4x in place of theta? So 2 theta is then 8x, so we have sine of 8x equals 2 times sine of 4x times cos of 4x, and we can isolate the sine of 4x cosine 4x by multiplying by a half to cancel out that 2. So we have that a half sine of 8x is equal to sine of 4x times cosine 4x. So this is what we will sub into our integral to make it even easier to compute. So this becomes the integral of 1 half sine of 8x dx. And we can simplify that further by factoring out this a half outside the integral. This is just 1 half times the integral of sine of 8x dx. So what's the antiderivative of sine of 8x? Well, we know that the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So it's pretty tempting to say that it should be negative cosine of 8x. But notice that if you differentiate this negative cosine of 8x, you've got to apply the chain rule. And the result there is sine of 8x, but then you have to take the derivative of the inside of the 8x here, so times 8. And we just want the derivative to be sine of 8x. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by 1 8 and then factor that into the derivative. So derivative of negative 1 8 cosine of 8x is equal to sine of 8x, and that's it because the 8 cancels with the 1 8. So this here is the antiderivative of sine of 8x. So we can put that into the integral. This is 1 half, and then the integral just comes out to negative 1 8 cosine of 8x. And don't forget your plus constant at the end. Lastly, let's multiply this a half to get negative 1 16th cosine of 8x plus our constant. And there we go. That's the result of the integral. Negative 1 16th cosine of 8x plus a constant. Here's our next integral. We want to compute the integral of sine squared of 3x minus cosine squared of 3x. And initially, this integral looks pretty tough. Actually, it's not even clear how to do this by substitution. But if you remember the double angle formula for cosine, you'll notice that this expression inside the integral looks pretty similar. The double angle formula for cosine goes like this. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Now here in our integral, we've got a sine squared minus cosine squared, whereas in the double angle formula, we've got cosine squared minus sine squared. But there's an easy fix for that. Just multiply both sides by negative 1, get negative cosine of 2 theta is equal to negative cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And negative cosine squared plus sine squared, well, that's the same thing as sine squared minus cosine squared. So negative cosine of 2 theta equals sine squared of theta minus cosine squared theta. Now to make this look exactly like the expression in our integral, all we have to do is substitute in 3x for theta. So on the left hand side here, we've got negative cosine of 2 times 3x, which makes 6x. And on the right hand side, we've got sine squared of 3x minus cosine squared of 3x. And this is what we can substitute in 
for our integral. So the integral is really just the integral of negative cosine of 6x dx. And the integral of cosine is sine. We've got a negative here, so it'll be a negative sine. And keep in mind that we've got a 6x in front, and that'll yield a times 6 when we take the derivative, so we have to multiply by 1 over 6 to cancel that out. So negative 1 sixth sine of 6x plus our constant. And there we go. That's all it is. Here's our next integral, the integral of sine squared x. It's not clear how to do this by substitution. We can't use the sine double angle formula because we don't have a sine cosine term. And we can't use the cosine double angle formula because we don't have a cosine squared minus sine squared term. Or can we? We know that the cosine double angle formula is stated as cosine of two theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And we don't have a cosine squared term here. But what if we write this cosine squared term in terms of sine squared? That is, we know that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. So that means cosine squared of theta is equal to one minus sine squared of theta, which means we can just put this in for the cosine here. And the result then is cosine of two theta is equal to one minus sine squared of theta minus another sine squared of theta. And if we simplify this, we get that cosine of two theta is equal to one minus sine squared minus sine squared. So one minus two sine squared theta. And that means we can solve for sine squared theta in terms of cosine two theta. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add two sine squared theta to both sides and subtract off that cosine of two theta. And we get that two sine squared of theta equals one minus cosine of two theta. And then just multiply by a half to get rid of that two, we get sine squared of theta is equal to one half times one minus cosine of two theta. And if we sub in x for theta, it matches up with what we have in our integral. So sine squared of x is equal to one half times one minus cosine of two x. And we just take that expression here and we sub that into our integral and suddenly it becomes much easier to compute. So this is the integral of one half times one minus cosine of two x dx, we can factor out that one half, just get one half times the integral of one minus cosine of two x, that integral taken with respect to x, and now we just take the integral. So one half times integral of one is just x, integral of cosine is sine, we've got a negative in front, so negative sine, and before we write down that negative sign, notice that there's a two x inside here. So if we were to differentiate, the chain rule would cause us to multiply by two, and we can cancel that out by multiplying by half. So x minus a half times sine of two x. And don't forget your constant of integration plus c. And let's just simplify this, multiply through by half, one half x minus one fourth sine of two x plus our constant of integration. And there we go. That's all there is to it. This formula here that we used is actually called the power reduction formula for sine. And to speed up computations, it might be helpful to remember it so you don't have to go through the derivation each time. But if you ever forget it, then you can always start with the double angle formula for cosine and use the Pythagorean identity and you'll get there. Here's our final integral we want to compute the integral of cosine squared of 2x dx. Again, this looks tricky. There's no clear way how to do it with substitution or sine double angle formula or cosine double angle formula. But again, there is actually a way that we can rearrange the cosine double angle formula to help us out. Let's start out by writing it again. 
cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Now we just want cosine squared. That sine squared is kind of messing us up here. So what we do is we write the Pythagorean identity that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Solve for sine squared in terms of cosine squared. So sine squared of theta equals one minus cosine squared of theta, and then put that expression in for sine squared theta here. And when we do that, we get that cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared of theta minus one minus cosine squared of theta. And we can just simplify that. Cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared of theta and distribute that negative sign. So minus one, then plus cosine squared of theta. Simplify that even more. Cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared plus cosine squared makes two cosine squared of theta, then minus one. And we can solve for cosine squared theta here. That's what we want because that's what's in our integral. So add one to both sides. So one plus cosine of two theta is equal to two cosine squared of theta, and then get rid of that two by multiplying by a half. So a half times one plus cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared of theta. And now to make this look exactly like what we have in our integral, we sub in two x for theta. So one half times one plus cosine of two times two x, which is four x, is equal to cosine squared of two x. And with that, we can finally make our ultimate substitution into the integral. The integral becomes just the integral of one half times one plus cosine of four x dx. Factor out that one half outside the integral, so one half integral of one plus cosine of four x dx. Take the integral, one half times integral of one is just x. Integral of cosine is just sine. So we wanna put a plus sign, but hold on before we put that plus sign. Notice that there's a four x inside the cosine the chain rule will make us multiply by 4x when we differentiate, so we have to cancel that out by multiplying by 1 fourth. So plus 1 fourth sine of 4x, and then plus our constant of integration. Just expand that out, 1 half x plus 1 eighth sine of 4x plus our constant of integration, and there we go, we're done. Like before, it might be useful to remember this formula that cosine squared of theta is equal to one half times one plus cosine of two theta. That's called the power reduction formula for cosine. And if you remember it, then you won't have to go through all this work to derive it every single time. But again, if you ever forget it, you can just start with the double angle formula for cosine, use the Pythagorean identity to get that all in terms of cosine and solve for cosine squared. So now we know how to perform integration using the double angle formula. In the future, we'll continue practicing some special techniques for integration, such as using polynomial division or completing the square.